for 150 years, 149 years, uh, and, um, and it, it should come first, because otherwise you're learning facts without any rationale, without any sense of, of what it's for. And the rationale is so beautiful and so elegant and actually so easy to understand, I think. Well, let, let me ask you in this regard to, to that, because would you... I, I, are we making a mistake by calling evolution a theory? I mean, evolution is a fact. Yeah. It's natural well, selection, perhaps. Okay. A theory. If you look up the word theory in the Oxford Dictionary, you'll find two main definitions. One is the only a theory one, as in it's just a hypothesis, nobody knows for sure, it's just a theory. The, the other one is a body of knowledge which is coherent and which is taken to be factual, which is, take, which is taken to be factual until maybe something better comes along, but, but there's a, so the theory of gravitation, Einstein's theory, quantum theory, and, um, and evolutionary theory. And clearly scientists are using it in that sense, whereas l lay people, eagerly egged on by unscrupulous creationist propaganda, are taking it in the, in the hypothetical so, so you're comfortable calling evolution a theory? I mean, it seems to me, if I look around, the facts of evolution are obvious, but the question... Well, no, I would call it a fact. I think, I think that, that, that we, are, uh, we are, we are playing the wrong game by, by using the philosophically sophisticated term theory. Um, since the other side is playing the game of using the, the, the colloquial term, the colloquial term for what evolution is, is fact. Yeah. It is a fact. Yeah, exactly. And... I think I'm all in favor of that. It, it's a fact in the same sense as that's a table. Yeah, exactly. Or the uh, earth goes around the uh, sun. And, and um, if you're going to get sophisticated and, and philosophical, no doubt it's only a theory that that's a table. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. And, and uh, that there are sense data pouring in which, which uh, so far have failed to falsify the hypothesis that that's a table. <laughs> um, and in, in, in the colloquial sense, uh, we, if, if ever the word fact should ever be used, then it's used of the fact that that's a table, and it, it should be used of the fact that we are uh, common, we, that we share a common ancestor with monkeys, that we share a common ancestor with sea squirts and starfish uh, that, uh, and, and bacteria. That is a fact in the ordinary language sense of a fact. Now, natural selection is a theory for what has driven evolution in adaptive directions, that for what has put together the powerful illusion of design, which nobody could fail to notice. It's not the only thing that drives evolution. I mean, much of evolutionary change is driven by random mm -hmm. genetic drift, by uh, the so-called neutral theory of molecular genetics. But uh, natural selection is the only theory that's ever been proposed, and I think that ever will be proposed, that's capable of accounting for the illusion of design which, which we see, uh, see around us. So I'm not quite sure whether... I mean, Darwin thought that both natural selection and evolution itself were theories in the tentative, hypothetical sense, and he spent all, most of his life gathering evidence for them. Um, I think now we've reached the point where the fact of evolution is a fact, and nobody could seriously doubt it. Um, there is still controversy over the theory that natural selection is the dominant driving force. I think nobody would doubt that it's the dominant driving force of adaptive evolution, but many people, including me, doubt that it's the dominant, dominant driving force of all evolution as measured at the molecular level. Oh, maybe we'll get to that too, because I want to ask you about real... In this country, there's this, the, 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 these fake controversies that have been invented in a lot of different areas, but, the, but particularly the, the, um, the people at places like the Discovery Institute and elsewhere have, have tried to put forward... It's this beautiful... I got into probably publicly talking about this in this country when in Ohio they were about to introduce the requirement in some sense that intelligent design be taught alongside uh, uh, evolution. And there was a debate um, th that the Board, board of Education set up uh, down in Columbus uh, before the public and the board, and I was asked, because I'd written something about this in the paper, asked it to be on this along with another scientist who, who happens to be a religious biologist, Ken Miller, um, and then two members of the Discovery Institute. And uh, we all thought that, I mean, I agree with you, by the way, not only do I, do I not like the debate format, but in science it's actually very um, disingenuous. Yeah. Uh, because first of all, it doesn't happen that way most of the time, but secondly, it gives 
the impression, and I'm sure you've had this, a lot of people want to appear, want to be on stage to debate me about evolution or about alien abduction or whatever it is, because if you're reasonably presentable and, have re and your arguments are interesting, someone who, who's out there in the audience who doesn't necessarily have, know what's happening will come away from it in the end saying, well, you know, he said, she said, it, you know, it sounded reasonable on both sides. And so at that debate, I made it quite clear at the beginning that this was not representative, that if it had been representative, there would have been 10,000 scientists on one side of the table and two representatives of a wacky fringe group on the other side of the table. But, but it's very important. But we thought that they were going to get up and say, you know, all the reasons why intelligent design should be taught. But they're, they're really brilliant and they have much better marketing than scientists do for the most part. And, and, um, and one of the slimiest of them, who happens to be a philosopher, um, got up and, and, and a rather intelligent man, he said, you know what, we don't want to force that. We're, we're open-minded. We don't want you to teach, require you to teach intelligent design. We, w we just want you to teach the controversy. Now, what a brilliant statement. That was the first time it was used in this country. And it's brilliant because, of course, it's like asking, you know, when did you stop beating your wife? I mean, at, you know, at, at, you can't, it, it, the minute you say it, it presumes there's a controversy. And it's brilliant because most people in this country yeah. uh, believe that evolution is incredibly controversial. Yeah. And, in fact, uh, don't, in fact, I don't know if you know one of these statistics. It's really scary. If you ask Americans, and this was done in a poll last year, Forget that most apparent Americans don't believe in evolution, at least when asked about it. That's true. By far, the majority don't believe in it. But they were asked, if, independent of what you believe, what should be taught in schools? Okay? 12% said evolution only. 24% said creationism only. And the rest of Americans were, you know, like to be open minded, teach everything. So it's much scarier, in yeah. fact, than you might think otherwise. Yeah. Well, it sounds so reasonable, doesn't it? I mean, they, by, by the way, there are all sorts of creation myths that you could teach. I mean, you could have hundreds of different ones. I mean, I, I think maybe w one way to retaliate is to say, well, let's teach the controversy about uh, reproduction and let's have equal time for the sex theory of reproduction <laughs> and the stalk theory of... <laughs> no, I... No, in fact, that's perfect. I think that's what, I mean, that's an example of what, when we talk about science education, which is what you try to do. Let's bring this to an, an example that people can internalize and respond to. And in fact, I, I use the same example. In this country, there's, uh, you know, people, it's really resonated because people think we should be open-minded. But when I point out, well, look, in that National Science Foundation survey that I talked to you about, 50% of the American public does not know the Earth goes around the sun and takes a year to do it. So therefore, in physics class, if we're worried about being open-minded, and most of half the American public doesn't believe that, in physics classes, shouldn't we spend equal amount of time on the, on, on the Earth-centered cosmology? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And when you put it that way, people, it, it sort of, people realize that's, that's clearly nonsense, and it brings home the key point, which is that the, the purpose of education is actually not to validate ignorance, but to overcome it. Yeah. And, and, and so, if, 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 if we're, do, I mean, and that's the onus on, on scientists, if people don't understand these things, it means we're doing a bad job, and we have to do a better job. It doesn't mean we should do a worse job. And I, and I think all of these things do reflect the fact that we as scientists, obviously you and I spend a lot of our time 